Hello everybody, Dr. Markel here. Walter and I are hanging out. Yes, I am not sitting on the couch because he booted me off. He's kind of a hog, hence we call him pig. But anyways, Walter and I are getting some stuff done around the house and a question came back to me that I was asked a couple times over the weekend when I was home for Thanksgiving. And it's one actually that we get asked often at whenever I tell someone that I'm a chiropractor. Uh, they always, well, I've said before that they'll go, oh, I've had these headaches or oh, I've had this back pain or oh, I've had these allergies. Another common thing that we get is, oh, I have this pinched nerve and I can think of exactly when I pinched it or I don't know how I pinched it or I don't know what I did that pinched it. And usually what people mean when they say they have a pinched nerve is that they have pain that starts in one place and travels down to another one. So pain could be weakness, numbness, tingling, stuff like that. People think that if they have pain, um, well, it could be in low back. A lot of people think that sciatica is caused by a pinched nerve. And so um, maybe a chiropractor has explained it to you like this before. If you think of the signals coming from the brain going to the body, that they're like water coming through a garden hose, and that if you step on the garden hose, water isn't going to flow as freely. It's either going to stop completely or uh, it's going to just like blip, 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 just a little bit here and there. That is the, I don't want to say the old way of thinking because it's actually kind of ebbed and flow over time. That's the simple way of explaining it, I suppose. Only about 10% of the time is it actually like a pressure on a nerve that's causing someone's symptoms. 10% of the time, that's like next to none. That's one out of 10, barely any. Most of the time, so we've talked before about how when we deliver an adjustment, it isn't to move the bone, but it is to get the nerve to send the signals as freely, as quickly, as efficiently as possible. So, excuse you, Walter, if you are using the bone out of place, the step on the garden hose theory, ideally, as soon as we make the adjustment, the problem, problem, would be gone. We wouldn't have to come back to the chiropractor or we should be better right away. That is where the problem lies. The problem isn't that the bone is out of alignment or that our foot is on the garden hose. The problem is the the nerves that supply the muscles, muscles attached to bones, right? And so muscles are, in theory, the ones responsible for moving bones. So if a bone is out of place, the muscle had to move it. And so a lot of people think, oh, it's tight muscles or I have loose muscles. Yes, that contributes to it, but what controls the muscles? The nerves. The nerves control the muscles. Your muscles don't move just willy-nilly. Your brain up here is controlling them too. And so when we have a bone out of place because a muscle is pulling it out of place, it is because there is something aberrant with that nerve supply. The nerves in that area are not able to send the signals like they need to. And so when we make an adjustment, it isn't to put a bone back into place. It isn't to take our foot off of the garden hose. It is to allow the water to send as freely as it can. And so really garden hose water spigot I'm gonna think of a better analogy maybe not right now I don't know how much time you have but pinch nerve only actually a real thing about 10% of the time a lot of time the actual problem is that things are out of place and then it's affecting the nerve the nerve isn't able to communicate with the brain and so um, like I said, common question we get, but just wanted to dump a little bit of knowledge on with you today. Have an awesome, oh, excuse you, Walter, again. Have an awesome rest of the night, everybody.